Okay, well, before you even look at the trypsin, where does peptide C fit into our overall framework? It has to be next to feet. So we now know this is lysine, right? Even without thinking about the characteristics of trypsin. Well, confuses me is I think of like the previous steps where it's like there was a cut there and feet was by itself. So now we can ignore everything before and just concentrate on, oh, it's actually. I should get rid of these previous cuts. Okay. And we're imagining going back. Notice how, again, we're starting with the full peptide uh, 7. We're okay. starting with a fully connected peptide 7 again. But why, how did you know supposedly that it was lysine? Well, would you agree that the phenylalanine must have been connected to the lysine originally? But th let's not even worry about that. Let's not even think one single thing about trypsin. We know that the lysine was connected to the phenylalanine. Oh, and there's just one phenylalanine. That's right. That's why this step was so crucial. Very few students do this, but simply making a list of the jigsaw puzzle pieces and then crossing them out when you know where they go is crucial for solving this detective story. Yeah, we're we know on. that the phenylalanine is first. And now that we know that the lysine is in the same fragment as the phenylalanine, we know it goes here without even having to look up trypsin yet. First, you should do what we can get from just the obvious fragments. And then we can, can do the hard part here. And we can ignore the other pieces, the other cuts. Those were just used to put in oh, the yeah. spot. So, yeah, well, the cuts from part, e, from part D are completely irrelevant here. This Great. is a brand new type of cut. Okay. Now, before again we do any further work, where is peptide D? Is peptide D uh, going here? Uh, yeah, so. Is peptide D uh, in the middle or on the right? It's four. Middle, right? So it has to be towards the right. The oh, key right. is it's got an ammonia. Right. Which means it must be coming from the right. Great. Right. We know that the, where are we getting the ammoniums come from from cleaving this carboxy. Oh, we end. have a tur there already. Which is good. Can you name the carboxy end? Remember that the carboxy end is amidated. The carboxy end here has an amide group on it. So you can, okay, you can amidate a carboxy, but you can't hydrocene it. That's true. Yeah, okay. Right. If you understand the mechanisms, you can see why that is. But anyway, um, or, or maybe not, actually. So in uh, any case, we know that, uh, so I guess we know exactly where this lysine goes. Don't we know for sure that this lysine is here? Because we know that this fragment, peptide D, is the last fragment. We already know that this is peptide C over here. So where are you getting another lice from? Well, didn't they tell us that uh, we were getting three fragments here? C, D, and lysine. Oh, lice. Very important to read the whole problem. Notice how I've written exactly what we got here. Originally, we got three fragments, C, D, and lysine. Uh -huh. But I know that D goes at the very end. So that this lysine here must be before fragment D. So this must be lysine. OK. And then, um, so I'll cross out two of the lysines. I know where both of those go. And now I can do even more work. I know this must be aspartic acid. That's what I couldn't find, figure out. Can you please explain that? Well, remember earlier we said that these three were aspartic acid, lysine, and lysine. That was something that we'd figured out from part D. Wait, the ones we have left are, we have ASP left, Philly, and Tyre. Wait, no, we did Tyre. I should have crossed that out, that's true. So we have, so we are using the previous experiment in terms of deciphering which, from the peptides. Well, of course. It's still the same peptide, right? So right. We're, we're using what we figured out. Everything we've already figured out is still true. Everything we figured out is still true, and we want to build on top of that. So we just have ASP, Philly, and Val left, right? That's right. That's right. ASP, Philly, and Val. Okay. So now. And in fact, now we know where the ASP goes. It goes here. Because of the previous one. Because in our previous work, missing. we saw that these three were ASP, lice, and lice. Remember when we put this up here, we didn't know what order they were in, but we knew that they were all next that to each other. That helps, actually. So I should so always, now we know always this. put that in. Yeah, if you know exactly where somebody goes, you write that down. But if you so only know the possibilities, it? you write that down too. Why didn't we write it down before? If we knew that it had to be well, together. I'm sorry? If we knew that it had to be together. But we didn't know what order these would be in. We knew that these three spots were asked, lice, and lice, but we didn't know what order they were in. 
So I just wrote up here that these three spots are asp, lice, and lice, but we don't know what order they're in. But now that we know that these two spots are lysine, now we do know this spot is aspartic acid. Okay. So um, who goes here, isoleucine and valine? And we still don't know which is which. So actually, you don't even have to even think about the trypsin for this step, although you could use that to confirm your thinking. But the fact that this was trypsin is just redundant in this case. We didn't have to think about that to figure out all the information that we can get in this case. So we figured out that this is isoleucine, and uh, so this is still ILE or VAL. We just don't know which is which here. Yeah. So the important point here is you don't necessarily have to leap to interpreting the enzyme. There's a lot of information we can get just by looking at the collections in the peptides. And who's connected to whom? So then the last one with bemolysin. You have one peptide and one free amino acid. I think eel has to be on the right so that you can do that NH4 plus thing. You see what I mean? Well, bemolysin cuts on the amino side of LA and VAL. But in order to get an H4 plus, yeah. you have to have this on the right so that you can cut here. Can you do that with that one too? Put that one on it. Now, this is the side chain for isoleucine. If you look it up in the table, you'll see this is the side chain for ILE. Right. Now the question is, which of these is at the C-terminus? Well, here's the way to tell. We've known all along that the C-terminus was amidated. Well, this it has an amidated C-terminus. So the isoleucine must have been the C-terminus. Again, it really has nothing to do with the fact that this is thermolysin. The fact that this is thermolysin doesn't help us because um, both valine and isoleucine would be treated the same by the thermolysin. And if Val, had, if Val could have NH2, but he'd have to write it in, because otherwise right. we'd assume it would be OH as the carboxyl. If he simply writes the symbol, then yeah. you assume that it's the amino acid in its normal, ordinary form. Right. If it's not in the normal, ordinary form, he has to write out the full structure for you. But that's just confusing that he then writes out the NH2. I mean, okay. Okay, well that's our time. So the next thing you should do, as soon as possible, is just redo this problem that we just did. The same exact problem. Just redo the same exact problem uh, and try to make sure that you can get through it. And of course, you want to be focusing not on whether you remember the answer, but what were the logic steps that we used. Thank you. I borrowed one of your books. Thank you. My answer book, the blue one. There you go. Um, this is just a. Why when they, they said clearly one amino acid, this is from the very beginning of the problem, mm -hmm. is missing after total acid hydrolysis. Why didn't he write terp or cis? He just wrote terp. Because we said cysteine also gets destroyed? Yeah, I believe he said that. Yeah, I don't know. It's on page 132. Sorry. Well, in my notes, I have that he said that both tryptophan and cysteine get completely destroyed by total acid hydrolysis. So I don't know why he wouldn't say that it could be either tryptophan or cysteine here. Yeah. Thank you. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. 
By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.